So any tissue, if you take, there are certain structures that you need to be looking for. If you take a section of the tissue and look it under the microscope, okay, you will find a background that's going to be called your ground substance, as it's highlighted, or matrix, okay. So in the matrix, you may find some cells with the nucleus or some fibers or some tissue, you may just find only cells. And some tissue, you may find a few or more fibers and just a few cells compared to this, this and this. Okay. And then you should know what is ICF, ECF by now, intracellular fluid, extracellular fluid, inside and outside the cell. Outside the cell, extracellular fluid is between cells, so they may also call it interstitial fluid. So it's the same as extracellular fluid. So if you take a cell, okay, there's a cell, there's another cell, there's another cell. ICF is your cytosol inside the cell. Whatever liquid that you find in between, that's your extracellular fluid, or also they call it interstitial <coughs> fluid. Then embryonic tissues, these are the tissue layers first developing when you form a baby, before even it becomes a baby. So they call these layers <coughs> germ layers. So if you have a sperm and Ovum, they fuse, they form what they call a zygote, like a single cell. It becomes two cells, four cells, eight cells, 16 cells, 32 cells. What kind of cell division we are talking about when you do this? Go from two to four to eight to 16. What kind of cell division? Mitosis, exactly, okay? So when you come here up to this point, then it starts differentiating instead of just dividing and growing into different layers. They call them germ layers. The outermost layer will be the ectoderm. You see those words, ecto, uh, endo, <coughs> and mesoderm. Ectoderm is this out layer, more inside, endo, in the middle, in between is the mesoderm. These are the first three germ layers. Later, the, the ectoderm will become your um, epidermis, the skin, okay? The uh, endoderm will become your uh, muscles, uh, bones, and blood. A mesoderm will become the inner linings of the organs, some of the internal organs. But uh, all I want you to understand is uh, what is the primary germ layer, what are the three different regions. Then you have to prepare the tissue in order to see how they look like under the microscope. So they section, meaning cut it across, and you can cut it in different ways. They call these histological sections. So if you see figure 5-1, what do you see in the, the three different figures? If you don't cut it right, you'll be missing something. Look at the egg or look at the tube, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have to cut it right, it has to be right where you can see all the parts, okay? And then there are names for the different sections in page 146, figure 5-2. On the top, you see a bone that is cut right across from the top. They call it LS, longitudinal section. Lengthwise, L for lengthwise, L for longitudinal. The other one, in the transverse orientation, if you cut, they call it transverse section or cross section. You're cutting across, right? Mm -hmm. And then the third one, you're cutting diagonally. That's called oblique, oblique section. So you can have <coughs> longitudinal cross or transverse or oblique sections. You can uh, have smears and spreads. Smear is if you take a liquid uh, 
uh, sample and spread it, <coughs> or you can take a small uh, section of the tissue and you can spread it on a slide. Then you have the epithelial tissue. You have four major categories of tissue. First is your epithelial. Then you have connective. Cartilage will be part of the connective tissue. And also blood and bone. Blood is liquid, bone is solid. Unlike the other tissues which have a more soft composition. Then you have muscular tissue. And then the last one is the nervous tissue that includes your brain, spinal cord and the nerves. Spinal cord and the nerves. So you have four major categories of tissues. But connective tissue within that you have another one which we call cartilage that uh, joins your bones in the joints. It's like ropes tying the bones together. <coughs> Blood and bone are also considered as connective tissue. This is liquid form, this is solid form. So we will do the epithelial tissue first. Epithelial tissue are classified if you want. You can. Uh, the description is on page 147 at the bottom and then 148. The words are all uh, highlighted. Okay. So let's first look at the simple epithelium. Simple means one layer of cells. Stratified means multiple layer of cells. So based on whether the cells are arranged in one layer or multiple layers, the epithelial tissue, they give names or classify based on two characteristics. One is number of layers of cells. Another one is cell shape. The number of layers, whether you have one row or multiple rows, okay? So if you have only one row, they call it simple epithelium. If you have multiple rows, more than two, more than one, even if you have two rows, they call it stratified epithelium. Yeah. So based on the cell shape, it can be squamous. These cells look kind of flat, something like this. Or cuboidal, where it looks like cube. <coughs> or columnar, where the cells are tall like columns and they have some hairs which they call cilia and this is your nucleus. There is some cell that looks like a wine glass. They call it goblet cell. The cilia <laughs> help with movement and the goblet cell secretes mucus. This is very typical for columnar epithelium and then there is one they call pseudo stratified columnar. Pseudo means false. So pseudo stratified means it's not actually stratified, not multi layers. <coughs> but the way the cells are arranged, some cells are short, some are tall. But the nucleus, the position makes you think it's multi layered suddenly when you look at it. So they call it pseudostratified columnar epithelium. This you have only for the columnar, so it's a variation of this. So this is like giving first name, last name. We have to consider the number of layers and the shape. Then you have either simple squamous, simple cuboidal, simple columnar, or pseudostratified columnar. Or you can have stratified squamous, stratified cuboidal, you don't find stratified columnar. Transitional epithelium is not really a kind of epithelium, but sometimes, let's say if you have squamous cells, when they are stretched, they look like this, 
instead of a normal shape. So like if you have some cells here, when you do like this, if you take a section, the top will look normal, bottom will be stretched out. So it's in transition. Okay. The same way urinary bladder, when it fills up, it's going to stretch. So there's no technically transitional epithelium. What they have, the picture shows you uh, a transitional phase. So I want you to look up figure 5, 3, 5, 4, 5, 5, and 6. And all, all those colored figures. And try to see first, understand figure 5, 3, where they show the shapes like I have on the board. And try to see in uh, page 149, 5, 2, you can see the squamous and cuboidal, cuboidal, simple squamous, simple cuboidal. 150, table 5-2, you can see the simple columnar and pseudo-stratified columnar. What do you see unique there? The cilia, think of the hair, and the goblet cell, think of the wine. It's wine colored actually. Okay, the cilia and goblet cell. They are unique for only the columnar type epithelium, either simple columnar or pseudo-stratified columnar. The next set of figures just shows you they are keratinized versus non-keratinized. So when they are keratinized, they look more darker and also the shape is a little different compared to the non-keratinized. You can see the nucleus in the non-keratinized, but you don't see it very well in the keratinized. Right? You don't see that dot within each cell. Right? So it's full of keratin. Keratin is a waterproofing uh, protein you find in your skin cells or hair. In the last page, table 53, page 152, you can see the stratified cuboidal epithelium surrounding those little space there. Like if you see a little space, you can see two layers of the cuboidal epithelium. Okay, then uh, connective tissue. <coughs> connective tissue basically connects your uh, epithelial tissue to whatever is inside your body or it connects different parts like uh, the bones, they are, they are connecting the bones or they come in between the bones or uh, it's different basically ones. like a filler material like a junk or jello like substance. Okay. So you can see various functions for the connective tissue. <coughs> Binding organs, support, physical protection, immune protection, movement, storage, heat production, transport, those are all functions of connective tissue. Then uh, the cells that make the connective tissue, if you look under fibrous connective tissue, we call them fibroblasts. And there are some more cells that are involved in immune protection macrophages, leukocytes, plasma cells, mast cells. So you have some uh, other cells found in the tissue. Then you have, I told you about the fibers. There are three kinds of fibers. One is collagenous, elastic, and reticular. Okay. So among these three, the most flexible is the elastic fiber, as the name implies. And uh, the collagen fibers are tough and flexible. The reticular is in between in consistency. They are not as thick as collagenous and they are not as flexible as the elastic intermediate fibers. Then you see the ground substance. Ground substance is the background, whatever material uh, that fills the background. Uh, 
also call it matrix. Then let's look at the types of fibrous connective tissue. Overall, they classify the connective tissue into two, loose and dense. The loose and dense refers to loose arrangement or dense arrangement, how tightly packed. So you have uh, some examples under loose connective tissue. You have the areolar and reticular. If you see, your areolar tissue will look like this. Few cells, few fibers, they are randomly arranged. The reticular will be, the fibers will be more thick. You have pictures in the following pages. And then you have dense regular connective tissue and dense irregular connective tissue. So the dense connective tissue, if it is regular, the tissue will be very dense, the packaging of the fibers. They'll have the same pattern, so they call it regular, the dense regular. The dense irregular, if you see, the fibers will be much thicker than these and they'll be randomly arranged, irregular arrangement. So let's take a look at figure 5, 14, uh, 15, 5, 4, 5, 5, and 5, 6. 5, 4, you can see the areolar and reticular. Can you see the difference? The reticular, the fibers are uh, kind of thicker than the areolar and you see much fewer cells or you can say even both of them look kind of alike, not the color, just the arrangement. But the fibers are a little thicker, but you look at the next page, the dense connective tissue, the fibers are even more thick, right? And in one case you see the wavy pattern, it goes all the way down, the same pattern. So you have a regular arrangement, they call it dense regular, the fibers are arranged in a regular pattern and you can compare with the dense irregular. The, the, the fibers are thick but they are shorter and they are irregular in arrangement. Then you have uh, adipose tissue. Adipose tissue is your fat tissue that's made up of just the cells, like in this case. You don't see the background at all, or maybe very little. And the cells of the adipose tissue, they call them adipocytes. And we are going to stop there, okay? From cartilage, we will continue when we do the bones. That will be discussed in the bone chapter also, but we will come back and look at some of the pictures. And then we will do the muscles when we do the muscles and nerves when we do the uh, nervous system. So for this chapter, you need to know what is the, what is the tissue, the major categories, and some of those uh, definitions, and what are the different categories of the epithelial tissue, on what basis the epithelial tissue is classified, what, what does each one mean, and then for the connective tissue, how they are classified into loose and dense, and what are the uh, features they look for. They look for the cells, the matrix, and the fibers. Based on these three, they give names, how they are arranged. Whether you have more matrix, more cells, or less fibers, more fibers, you know, whether they are densely packed or loosely packed, regular versus irregular, that's how they get their names. Okay. So we have to know the description, like of it, like mm -hmm. whatever I explained to you. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there anything that you like us to bring class on Tuesday? Like you don't need.